Welcome back. This is lesson seven of uh, Machine Learning Zoom Camp session three, and we will talk about uh, uh, correlation, which is a way to measure feature importance for numeric uh, numerical variables. In the previous lesson, we talked about mutual information, which is a way to measure the importance of categorical features. And here we will talk about numerical. So for that, uh, so correlation, or also known as uh, Pearson's correlation, this is, uh, so let me, correlation coefficient. Um, so this is, uh, oh, here's the formula, by the way. And correlation coefficient is uh, Pearson's correlation. So this is a way to measure dependency between two uh, variables. So let me just uh, copy it here. So this is a way to of measuring the degree of dependency between two variables. So let's say we have a variable uh, x and a variable y. So both these variables are numbers. The correlation coefficient, um, usually is denoted by a letter R, is a number between uh, minus one and one. So for a negative correlation, uh, when um, well, correlation is negative, when uh, values of x grow, usually what happens is the values of y, they go down. So in this case, we say the correlation is negative. Increase in one variable leads to decrease in another variable. And when the correlation is positive, what happens is that when one variable grows, the other grows as well. So in this case, an increase in one variable leads to an increase in another variable. So it can take any value between uh, minus one and one. So when um, correlation coefficient is uh, somewhere between uh, 0 and 0 0.1, or likewise uh, for negative correlation between 0 and uh, minus 0 0.1, so the correlation is always, almost non-existent. So let's say it's low, very low. It means that for positive correlation, when one variable increases, only very rarely it leads to an increase in the other variable. For values between, uh, let's say, 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, or maybe we can even say 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 uh, uh, here. Um, or again, uh, if we talk about negative correlation, numbers between minus uh, 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So here, it's moderate correlation. So values increase in one variable sometimes lead to increase in other variable. And then values between, uh, let's say, um, 0 0.5 or even 0 0.6 maybe to 1. Uh, so this is negative and positive 0 0.6 and 1. So this is very strong correlation. So almost always increase in one lead to increase another in the other or increase in one lead to decrease in the other. So let's say often or like when it's close to one, when it's higher than uh, 0 0.9, then it's uh, almost always. So these are for cases when uh, both our uh, variables x and y are real numbers. So it can be any numbers. However, in our case, y is a binary variable. It means it can take only values between zero and one and x, can be any number. So for any number, we use this notation. So x is a real number, meaning it can be anything between uh, minus infinity and plus infinity. To, to make it more concrete, so let's say x be uh, tenor, which is uh, the number of months uh, clients spent with us, and y uh, is charm. Tenor is a variable, let's say, uh, that takes values between uh, 0 to, I don't know, let's say 200. So we can quickly check it. Um, full train tenor max is 72. Okay, between zero and 72. Right, and churn can only take values between zero and one. So in this case, positive correlation between x and y means that when x increases more tenure, uh, then more churn. Uh, in this case, it means for the larger the value of x r, the higher the churn rate. And uh, likewise, negative uh, correlation means uh, like more tenure, less churn. 
and uh, zero correlation or uh, low correlation like we uh, so here means that uh, variable doesn't really affect uh, uh, churn rate at all. And uh, yeah, we can quickly check uh, what's actually the correlation between our numerical variables and uh, churn. So let's quickly do this. Uh, first, we select our numerical uh, numerical values. So these are the three columns that we have, tenure, monthly charges, and total charges. And then uh, we have this uh, correlation coefficient. We want to correlate it with uh, with churn. And we get this um, we get these values. So here, tenure is negative, and total charges is negative. So the way we can interpret negative uh, coefficient here is uh, that uh, when tenure increases, when tenure increases, so the longer customer stays with us, the less likely they churn. So with the increase of tenure, uh, churn rate goes down, right? And to the same with uh, total charges. So total charges, the more people pay, the less likely they uh, leave. This might sound counterintuitive, but this, uh, so this tenure and total charges, they correlate. So the longer people stay with the company, the, uh, the higher the total bill is, right? That's why we see that uh, correlation is uh, negative here, right? And when we talk about monthly charges, so the way we can interpret it, so here the, the coefficient is positive. So the way we can interpret it, the higher the monthly charges are, the most likely uh, people are to leave, right? So the increase in uh, monthly charges, uh, so increase in monthly charges will lead to increase in the churn rate. And we can actually check this in in the code. So, in, well, for example, let's uh, let's take a look at tenor tenor. Let's take a look at tenor. And uh, what we can do is we can select, uh, let's say, people who are with uh, our company only for uh, two months or less, and look at the, the churn rate. So for them, the churn rate is uh, fifty nine percent, pretty high. So if uh, if somebody stayed with the company zero, one or two months. The churn rate in this group is pretty high. But let's say if we want to take a look at uh, people who spent more than two months in the company, yeah, the churn rate is pretty low. So probably what is more interesting for us to uh, check is uh, to look at the number of people who stay with the company between two and uh, let's say 12 months, uh, so less than a year. Right? So, so for them, the churn rate is still pretty high, almost 40%. And then finally, we can uh, take a look at uh, people who stayed with the company longer than one year. So for them, churn rate is even lower. It's uh, only 17%. So we can uh, see here. So let's say this is our this is our churn rate. And let's say this is our tenure. So for tenure between uh, zero and two months, we have a churn rate like almost 60%. 60%. So this is uh, between zero and two months. Then for uh, tenure between two months and 12 uh, months, we have churn rate of 40%. Uh, so it's uh, 40%. Right, so this is between uh, two and 12. And then finally, for people who are longer than one year, it is uh, 17%. So it's uh, more than two times. Uh, so we see here this uh, trend that uh, like it really goes down with uh, when tenure uh, increases, so it's 12 plus, when it increases, the churn rate really goes down. Let's take a look at uh, the other variable we have, this monthly charges. So let me just copy this. Um, yeah, so if we look at monthly charges, um, let's say less than $20 uh, per month, then the churn rate is uh, slightly less than 9%. So for monthly charges between $20 and uh, 50, uh, so the churn rate is 18%. And then for 
monthly charges more than $50 per month, the churn rate is uh, 32%. So we can again uh, draw it here, churn rate here, and now it's monthly charges. So for less than $20, we have 8% churn rate. So low value. So this is less than 20. Right. Then uh, it's, uh, between 20 and 50, we have uh, 18. So this is 18%. So this is between 20 and 50. And then uh, last, uh, we have. Uh, 30% this churn rate for more than uh, 50 plus. And we again see that there is a, uh, so here, so this is uh, uh, for tenure, this is negative, uh, negative correlation. And for uh, monthly charges is positive correlation. So when correlation is positive, increase in uh, charges lead to uh, increase in uh, churn rate. And when correlation is negative, increase in tenure leads uh, to decrease in uh, churn rate. Uh, the strength of correlation. So this is the this is what our correlation coefficient tells us. Um, so it uh, tells us how often increase in uh, tenure leads to decrease in uh, churn rate and. Uh, increase in uh, in monthly charges leads to increase in churn uh, rate. So this is uh, what uh, correlation coefficient tells us. And actually, if we only care about the importance, so not about the direction, we can look at the absolute value. So here, and we can again sort. So we don't need to order it here because it's kind of ordered already. So ten tenor is already the most important one, the most important numerical variable then monthly charges is the next important and then total charges is the least important one. So this way we can understand how uh, numerical variables affect our target variable churn. Um, yeah, so we now look at that. We look at other ways of measuring importance, um, like of measuring importance of categorical variables, measuring importance of uh, numerical variable. I think we are more or less done with uh, the exploratory data analysis step uh, and understanding the data, doing uh, initial analysis. And what we will do next is we will see how we can encode uh, categorical features so before we can put them in the, in the model. And instead of implementing this manually, this time we will use scikit-learn for doing that.